EverQuest progression servers are a great time for players that have loved the game to come back, or new players who are interested in trying EverQuest for the first time to give it a shot when there's going to be a lot of players and when it's a little bit less overwhelming because you start with a classic or one of the first three expansions normally. But there's still some overwhelming to it if you've never played. These are going to be beginner focused videos, but I really hope that any veterans of EverQuest that are watching this right now, which I know there's a lot of you, please put your tips down below in the comment section. Help people that are new to the game or returning come back and enjoy the game that means so much to all of us. This video specifically is going to be on the three tank classes. We're going to be talking about the Warrior, the Shadow Knights, and the Paladin, and all the different things that they can do, at least early on. Tanking in EverQuest is going to be pretty familiar to many of you, but there are some quirks to it that may not be as obvious if you've been a tank in other newer games. For example, as a warrior early on in EverQuest, you really only have one skill to pull aggro. We'll talk about that here in a moment though. Let's set the tone first about tanking. Tanks in EverQuest are essential. They are the meat shield, the group leader, the class that will more often than not lead you forward. They are masters of taking immense amounts of damage and deflecting it from your friends. Each of the different tanks in EverQuest have their own unique mechanics and even roles. Tanks are also the class that is the least likely to get an experience res on a raid, so you'll probably be doing a lot of grinding to get back that experience. If you plan on raiding as a tank, just kind of keep that in mind. Some general ideas about tanks. Well, they all need armor class. All tanks will also get the taunt skill, which is going to be very important for snapping aggro, and they're all going to have a little bit less DPS than, say, your pure DPS classes. Some of these tanks will be good at soloing, while others may falter. The warrior is the ultimate tank, but it's also the most boring out of the three, at least initially. The bare bones, no frills tank and go to for players who want to eventually be the main tank in raids. If you want an easy ramp up of skills and abilities that grow slowly across progression servers with a very well defined role, the warrior may be for you. Warriors later on will get powerful disciplines, AAs and skills that are pretty essential for raids and even for tanking in intense group encounters. They'll get greater toolkits for aggro generation from both items and skills, but early on, early on, you're gonna be basic as fuck. Sorry, but the test was positive. You're a basic bitch. Warriors will have slightly more health points and mitigation than other tanks, both of which are hybrids. If you're used to old school MMOs or you played EverQuest back in the day, the warrior will feel like home. Auto attack and kick are your friend, and then of course your ever important skill, taunt, which can move you up to the top of the mob's hate list, plus one. And it can be utilized fantastically with aggro builders, like one of the other tanks for example, the Shadow Knight. But more importantly, it's a fantastic tool for snapping aggro back to you. It's important to note that spamming taunt isn't going to build up aggro for you. It doesn't add on top of. And you want to make sure that you at least have it ready to go if that aggro switches over to the healer, for example. Beyond that, as a war, you'll most likely just be auto attacking and positioning. And positioning is actually very important in EverQuest. EverQuest as a tank is often about making sure you are on one side of the mob and the rest of your party is on the other. You'll also quickly realize that this means you may at times need to readjust as attacks and spells cause push. Why is this important? Well, there's everything from frontal attacks, frontal cone area effect skills, as well as just adding extra DPS from other players being behind the NPC instead of in front of it, or avoiding repost damage from it. The key skills for the warrior early on are going to be your taunt skill of course, which you get at level 1, dual wield at level 13, and AAs at later levels that increase aggro, or or when you get into the second or third expansion of EverQuest having your defensive discipline, which is one of the most powerful skills you're going to get especially for a long, long time. Some of the key takeaways for the Warriors is that they are the ultimate tank, especially for raid content. They have less versatility and solo ability than the other two tanks, but they make up for it by just really being specialized in that. The Warrior is going to be a very gear dependent class, but a very important class to a solid group or raid. If you want to be THE tank while sacrificing a bit of solo ability, 
the warrior is your choice. As the game advances, you will gain a lot more fun and interesting skills as well. Like all classes in EverQuest, your skill set and toolkit will expand, but the warrior will do it fairly slowly. These next two are the knight classes, and these are the paladin and the shadow knight. They are considered hybrid classes. The shadow knight pulls some from the warrior and pulls some from the necromancer. The paladin on the other hand pulls some from the warrior and then pulls some from the cleric. Because of this, they have the ability to cast spells, but lose the ability to dual wield, relying on two-handed weapons or sword and shield. They also each have their own class defining skill, or at least early on it was a class defining skill. Shadow Knights have a massive damage ability called Harm Touch, while Paladins have a massive healing ability called Lay on Hands. But that is about where some of the similarities end. Because they both do these things in very different ways, and their roles in groups are also going to be somewhat different. Shadow Knight is the only tank I personally played for any extended period of time. The Shadow Knight is a hybrid class combining the Warrior and the Necromancer. They deal in death and are the only tank that can split pull among the likes of monks and bards, though the latter two will still have an edge. The way Shadow Knights do this is a combination of their Snare spell and their Feign Death ability. Feign Death is the ability that lets you fake your own death, thus clearing your aggro from NPCs. Splitting mobs in EverQuest is incredibly important, much more so than some of the other newer games where you can take on many mobs at once. Every enemy in EverQuest is, is dangerous, so it's important to not get more than you want. Shadow Knights will rely heavily on self-healing through life taps. These life taps are damaging spells that bring back some of that damage to you as healing. And they can help your healer maintain some mana reserves in groups, or you can allow you to heal through AEs in raids. Where they really shine though is their aggro generation ability. Shadow Knights within the first few expansions get a damageless aggro spell that can be used to either lock aggro to the Shadow Knight or build up aggro safely to allow the warrior to taunt off of them. The Shadow Knight can then use their FD ability to drop their aggro completely. I've of course biased having played this class the most, but to me this is the most versatile solo tank class, due to the ability to damage while self healing, along with several different buffs and other utilities. They later become incredibly powerful with killing multiple things at once with a very powerful AA that offers even more healing based off of the death of NPCs. Plus, you get a pet, so you actually never have to play alone. Your Josserer can be your friend forever, you know? At least until you forget that they exist and they die to some NPC and you forgot about them. But then you just summon a new friend and it's fantastic. <laughs> Key skills and spells for the Shadow Knight early on are going to be your taunt skill, life taps, aggro generating spells, and of course harm touch. Harm touch, just to reiterate there, is a damaging spell on a very long cooldown. Now this spell is going to be something where you can pretty much close to one hit kill certain things and it grows in power as you gain levels as well as as you gain AA abilities in this skill later on in different expansions. It has an upfront damage and then in later expansions a dot component as well, doing immense damage as well as lowering the time that it takes to reuse it. The key takeaways for the Shadow Knights are that they have solid DPS potential for a tank and are very self-sufficient. They offer the least to a group or raid outside of being an off tank, but a good Shadow Knight can utilize their feigned death abilities to be a very competent puller, both in raid situations and group situations. But let's move on to the other side of the coin. Like the Shadow Knight, the Paladin will be more active than the Warrior, as you'll gain spells from the Cleric Tree and the own Paladin Tree that you can cast during and outside of combat. They are the ultimate group healer tank and undead slayer. Paladins are the light side of this two-sided coin. Everything the Shadow Knight does, the Paladin tends to do with more altruism, like a total f***ing nerd. Paladins begin with an incredibly powerful ability that will remain a constant for you throughout your time in EverQuest, Lay on Hands. This ability, which will later be modified to reduce its very large cooldown, 
is a massive heal for either yourself or anyone you target, the complete inverse of the harm touch ability for Shadow Knights. It resets on death as well, which can lead to some interesting tactics on raids. At low levels when you have low HP and a very long, long cooldown for the ability, it may not seem super powerful, but it will grow in power as you level, but it is a huge boon and it has saved many groups and many raids. But that's not all that paladins get. Of course, paladins are pulling from the cleric tree, as well as adding some of their own spells. Paladins will provide serviceable additional healing, though they'll likely never be asked to be a primary healer unless it's a very specific situation with a raid where group healing is the necessary way to heal. Buffs can help supplement if you're lacking a cleric or druid and eventually they will get powerful group heals. Their primary source of hate is also a strong form of control. Stuns. These stuns will grow in power and you'll have many of them. Stuns that will help you especially with those caster mobs, the ones that seem to have infinite mana pools that just continuously self-heal themselves. Well, a paladin in your group or in your raid will help get rid of that pesky complete heal. They're also incredibly potent against undead NPCs, doling out immense DPS once they get the Slay Undead AA down the line. But even before then, they serve well with the Cleric Undead damage nukes. Paladins, like Shadow Knights, remain primarily an off-tank in raid situations, at least most times, but they also serve well as group tanks. So if you want a hybrid role, but also want a bit more of a healy look care for everyone else because people, then the Paladin is going to be probably the right class for you. Key skills and spells for the Paladin early on are the Taunt, Heals and Stuns, and of course, Lay on Hands. The key takeaways are that Paladins are a strong complement to any group and offer value to raids as off tanks, undead DPS, stunners, and healers, especially later in EverQuest lifespan. Again, please, if you have any other tips to add for these classes, things that I may have missed, beginner friendly tips, leave them down in the comments below. I personally love all three of these classes. I have played all three of them. Probably the Paladin is the least, but I knew some incredible Paladins when I was raiding who did amazing things. So all these classes are good in their own way. There's just certain things that one of them does better than the other. My name is Redbeard Flynn. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day.